for the intro and getting us started. We are going to be showing you a quick overview of five different app exchange apps. You're going to see the demo three minutes or less. They get one question, which by the way, let me just show you here who we're going to be hearing from today. These Demo Jam partners have prepared for you a fast but valuable demo to talk about what they do and what makes them unique on the app exchange. Let me just back up one second here. Joshua, why don't you say hi? Hi, guys. You guys well, can't respond, but hey, my name is Joshua. I am a solution architect at Aperio, and um, I'm really excited to be here today. So Jeff and I are going to give you some awesome commentary on these apps. It's going to be really fast-paced. Back to you, Jeff. All right, so Joshua, um, yeah. So sorry, one second not to jump in. I'm getting a couple of comments about how the screen sharing is not working. Oh, um, no. I'm going to have to back up. Hang on a second here. We need to see that would be a technology screen. fail on Jeff's side. I am so sorry, guys. So I'm not going to start over from the beginning, but hey, today is June 11th. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. You heard all that stuff before, but I want to introduce to you our demo jam. We've got Joshua Hoskins, Jeff Gross. These are our best pictures you'll find on the Internet. If you look for me on Twitter, you'll actually see a Lego uh, guy. This is what I really look like in real life. But we are excited to be here today. We appreciate the App Exchange partners uh, coming in and telling us about their wares today. As I said earlier, these are who we're going to be hearing from today. App to CPQ, Ascent ERP, Click Software, Cornerstone, and In Contact. So before we begin, I want to give you guys a little bit of ground rules. Here's what we've got. It's a three-minute live demo. We've got one audience question that's going to come in. There are no slides allowed, and you must have fun. If you don't have fun, we will come and find you at Dreamforce and force you to have fun at Dreamforce, which I know is not too hard anyway, but we're glad to have you guys here. So, watch out. Exactly. We know how to find you guys. In the midst of 115,000 people, we will still find you. Or you'll see us because we kind of stand out a little bit once in a while. So without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Joshua to introduce our first guest. All right. Thanks, Jeff. So up on deck, we've got Aptis CPQ, and uh, demoing today is going to be Diana from, um, from Aptis, and she's the manager for sales engineering. Aptis is an innovative configuration price uh, and quote functionality tool that empowers selling uh, to different channels. It really allows people to find the right products and the right options for any of the customers that they're dealing with. My best favorite thing about Aptis is actually about the ability for it to upsell and cross-sell among different opportunities. So you plug in the customer information and it does the magic for you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Diana. Are you out there? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Actually, before I was at Optus, I was a Salesforce admin, first 500 certified um, nine years ago. Yay! So happy Woo! Thanks. Um, today, I'm going to play a few roles. Um, Sally West here, she works for Tier 1, and she's in sales, so she has to get a quote and a contract out the door before the end of the quarter, which we all know is a couple weeks away. And John Tran, he's in finance, just like my mom is, and so... He has to get this invoice out the door, and my mom's a CFO, and she's always telling me things are changing between the quote and the ERP, so what's somebody to do to make sure they have the right information? So I'm going to show you how we get all that done in three minutes. And I'm going to play the role of Mary Manager. She's brand new. She's only been here a month, but both Sally and John are at club because they had such a great year, so now the manager has to do both their jobs. Fun place to be. TikTok, So Mary logs in too. Salesforce because Aptis is native on the platform. All the reporting is Salesforce reporting on the dashboard here. We've got a quote. We even have approvals, which you all know is not reportable in Salesforce. This is Aptis advanced approval. And we have our agreements, which are our contracts. Sally already started the deal for me. So Mary Manager, I come in, I see that Venture is an existing gold customer, which is nice. I can see there's a few opportunities. And the proposals are the quotes. So we've been working on this account for a while. We have some agreements already in place, like NDAs and MSAs. That's all handled through Aptis as well. And they handle the billing scheduling. So we have some orders here, and we have past purchases, which we call asset line items. So I can make sure that I'm billing for the correct price, but I'm also reordering at the correct price. Very important for SaaS companies and for renewals. 
So I'll start by going to Sally's opportunity. I can see here she put in the correct pricing contract and the correct price list to control what products and what prices are used. And then I can see the NDA that she already sent out. This is with our... One minute remaining. Sorry? One minute remaining. Thank you. So this is what we use in our word integration to generate our documents. We can go into our quote. We see categories across the top, products in the middle, filters on the left. Everything that Sally put in her cart is here. And everything that she's put in the cart is discountable. So we can put in that the customer has $7,000 to spend. And that will tell us the net discount. And Actus will tell us if it's a good deal and if approval is required. Mary Manager approves this. She can generate a nice looking document, again with X author using Word, and she can send out the invoices because everything on the quote is automatically put into a clean billing schedule. Was that time? You did. You came in 10 seconds under, so here you go. Yay! Crowd goes wild. Thank you. Joshua, go for a question here. All right, awesome. So um, I think we mentioned a little bit earlier, so if you guys have any questions around the product, go ahead and throw, uh, chat them in. But I, I would say for, for Actus, what is, what is your sweet spot um, in terms of the, the, the customers that, that use Actus? What industries um, do you see um, your, your, your product installed most? Well, you know, Actus is designed to be flexible for any industry, but obviously we're software. Salesforce is a customer, they're software as well, so we do really well there. That's most of my accounts. But I'm seeing a lot of growth right now in the medical, pharma space, as well as insurance and manufacturing. Awesome. Thanks so much time for, uh, for your time today, Diana. Over to you, Jeff. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that one. Hey, I want to introduce you guys to Ascent ERP. Ascent is the first force.com ERP built on the solution, purposely built for distribution and manufacturing customers. Ascent was built from the ground up to support force.com multi-tenant platform, and they're not only just an accounting system, or they aren't an accounting system that just simply added on modules for distribution and manufacturing, and they're also not an on-premise uh, solution that migrated to force.com. They are custom built from scratch, support B2B, B2C distributors, assemble to order and assemble to and engineer to order manufacturers. And you know what? They've even released another app exchange product recently that focuses purely on companies that rent their products. They have customers in eleven countries, ranging from biotech to garments to electronics, farming, flooring, and many more industries. Ascent was built for one was it's not built for one specific company or industry. They are built for anybody, and they can transform the enterprise into a flexible and sustainable manner. So today with us, we've got Sean McInerney, who is not only the founder, but he's the president of Ascent ERP. Take it away, Sean. Hey, thanks, Jeff. That was a great intro. Appreciate it. So yeah, like Jeff said, in the next few minutes, I'll try to show you a complete ERP system, or at least the fulfillment side of the our ERP solution that was built you know, specifically for Force.com. And we are handling everything from the from order from quotes, the opportunities to quotes, the sales order fulfillment, procurement, planning, right straight through to the invoice. So anything that has to be done in that middle part of the business, once you found the client and now you're selling to customers, we're taking care of the entire thing on the platform. So as a fulfillment product at heart, we had to find a way to say, you know, let's let's fulfill let's fulfill some sales orders. So we did create our own sales order object, and we'll look at that in a second. But in order to help our uh, customers log into mobile devices, we had a, we're now using, what you're looking at on the screen is an Apple iPod sheathed inside a Honeywell device that allows us to create a, full, a fully scannable uh, enterprise level uh, product for, with Apple. Now you didn't see me scan that QR code. But giving all of our users a QR code like this to scan allows them to quickly log into uh, Salesforce.com and the Ascent mobile menu. So back to so the sales order that we created is how we start driving demand into the system. And our sales order just gives sales reps unlimited information about their customers, including their credit limits, the tracking information, bill to, ship to. And of course, as we've converted opportunities or quotes to the sales order, we're bringing those items over that we're selling. We're giving the reps as 
more information about lead times, what's in stock, what our pricing you know, all looks like. So to fulfill this order, I've created a pick slip that's down in the warehouse. And I'm going to pull back up my, iPad, my uh, scanning device that's an iPod Touch. I am selecting the PIC SO. I have the, that PIC ID that I'm going to scan. And I have not touched the screen, but you see that I've moved to, okay, what are we picking? Let's pick the item. So now I've scanned an item. Am I in the right location in the warehouse? Sure. So now I am going to touch the screen. I am going to confirm I'm picking one item. I am going to confirm that I have the right lot ID in a sec here. And then once, the, once we've saved that we are picking the one part, uh, we then can come over, save the item, and it'll refresh, and we'll show that we've picked an item out of inventory. So complete item management, barcode scanning, uh, inventory control from Salesforce, all on the Salesforce platform. So how does all this great information get to the reps? Well, we've created something called the Item Master. It's basically uh, taking products and putting it on steroids where we can support bills of complex bills of materials, simple bills of materials, revision levels, uh, kitting, multi-warehouse, multi-locations in the warehouse. Uh, what's available to promise? So what do I have in stock right now that I can sell? What's the value of this piece of inventory? Uh, what are my min-max requirements? Three minutes are up, Sean, but that was an amazing amount of stuff that you got through in that three minutes. And, and frankly, you guys went even beyond what I was thinking initially with uh, what you could show in three minutes. So that is, that is extremely impressive to me. It is, is soup to nuts, including mobile logins, being able to use the mobile device with the sled that allows you to do all that uh, warehouse scanning and stuff. My question to you is where do people tend to start? Because you've got a ton of different modules in there. What is your most popular module that people are starting with? And uh, obviously, it ties into everything else that they can do with Salesforce. Let's hear, let's hear what's the the biggest thing people are purchasing right now with Ascent. Yeah, so nothing is really modular. It's it's a pretty much an all-in-one solution. But most of the customers come to us with, hey, I have an in inventory problem, or I have an assembly to order, uh, uh, you know, problem. And the customer base, there's two types. There's the clients that have been on the Salesforce platform for a while. And now they want to extend the power of Salesforce and you know all the, the greatness that you get from the Salesforce cloud. So they're, hey, we have a warehouse. We have inventory. We have assembly of business. Uh, we have manufacturing. I want to do my procurement. So it's just a natural progression to tie this directly into the Salesforce login so that now your reps have full visibility into the entire supply chain. And of course, now all of your operation types are part of the Salesforce login. The other type of clients that are coming to us are ones that, and believe it or not, the, there's still the majority of customers are running from small businesses to, you know, hundred million dollar businesses on spreadsheets and sticky notes, and we are helping them in a quick, affordable fashion, you know, launch a uh, world and class enterprise ERP system to run their business. That is amazing, Sean. I mean, the, the capabilities that you got there on the app exchange through the native platform again you guys didn't come from some other place you guys started out right here and you built it all out so congratulations on that thank you for showing us thank you back to you Joshua awesome thanks Jeff so next up is click software we've got Nico who's presenting to us he's a sales manager out there and click software is uh, the world leader in um, mobile workforce management space. So basically, their software is built on the salesforce.com platform, and it allows for advanced scheduling and employee shift management. So um, they're here to show, this, show us this. To Nico, are you out there? I'm here. Awesome, you know over to you, show us some awesome stuff. Thanks a lot. So we're in the business of scheduling, and whether you're scheduling assets, space, business processes, or people, like in this call center demo, scheduling can get tricky very, very fast. On this 100% native visual force uh, scheduling end, you can see a particular location and different positions you're scheduling to within this call center. You can, of course, do it manually and assign shifts to the different roles uh, one by one, drag and drop. But you can also pre-configure a few patterns and establish an ongoing uh, immediate demand for a day, a week, a month, a year. Drop the pattern onto the day where it begins, create your shifts, and the system generates all the shifts that will satisfy your demands for a period of time. Move from the positions view to the employee view, and you see all of your shifts unassigned. 
And here are all the folks that you can schedule to within this call center. Still, you can do it manually and just drag and drop the shift to the right uh, people or the people that you think are right for a particular shift. But what if you're wrong? What if this person is not available or doesn't have the skill to do it or is planning to do something else at that time? You'll get a rule violation with this little yellow mark and you'll see what's wrong with your scheduling decision. Press double click on this particular shift. You'll get your demand on one hand and your people sorted by references, distances from the location, or even overtime uh, to quickly figure out who is eligible to take on this shift, who will be taking it into overtime, and who should not be considered at all for this position. Pick your person, and you're good to go. The cool thing is that if you're scheduling a, a large amount of shifts, three days in this case, but a week, a month, you can simply select all of your shifts press the schedule button and the automated scheduling, the unique logic that we have brought onto the platform will automatically figure out who should be doing what based on the skills that these employees hold, their work preference times, unavailable times marked in, in gray, and available work times marked in green. And voila, you just satisfied your entire demand. Go to the actions button, bull, sorry, go to the actions button and publish your shift we will leverage the chatter functionality to communicate to those employees and let them know what are the shifts they're scheduled to do. And then personal note, double click, open the chatter functionality and say something nice. Enjoy. Right out in the field, employees will receive chatter notifications uh, by email and their mobile app. You can have the chatter notification remind inviting you in your email to review which shifts you've got scheduled, and you can take the Salesforce One mobile app that we've taken full advantage of to review your shifts and take a few actions right from your mobile device. Click on a particular shift, and the actions at the bottom will allow you to chat with your scheduler, again, leveraging chatter. Decline the shift and ask the scheduler to figure out something else. Use, perhaps, our time clock, which also has geo-based location capability, so when you clock in or clock out your employer, would know where you are, or if you are the employer, where your employees are when they clock in and out. And finally, we can invoke the logic of the system to swap shifts between employees. Now remember, when we schedule someone to a shift... That is your time. Uh, you time so, so close. Well, we covered the most. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, hey, so thanks for that. I mean, I'm just looking at you whizzing through this demo, and there's so much action-packed, awesome stuff in there. So um, kudos to you and the team for doing the development. I think the, the cherry on the top for me was all of that awesome spaghetti you have behind that schedule button where it places everyone there be, with some logic. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so the, the, question, the question for you is uh, similar to, to, to the last one as well is um, what types of events do you feel like people schedule most? I think that this, this app has the potential to uh, schedule shift workers to a call center, but what's the most interesting use case you've seen for the scheduler app? Well, today we count about almost 4,000 users to the system across the globe, and people are scheduling anything from volunteers and nonprofit organizations and call centers, and this is the classic human story. But we have chemical labs that are scheduling complex chemical processes, assigning people and instruments to those processes. We've got a business school that schedules uh, classes to classrooms, so they're managing their space. Uh, we've got business processes that are used during the system. Because it's all native or custom objects in Salesforce, if you're calling something a shift, it can be a business process, it could be an assignment, it could be a space. So uh, I guess the, most, the two most interesting use cases is uh, managing space, classes to classrooms, and chemical processes in the lab where you have people and instruments coming together into a long, complex process. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks for your time so much, Nika. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, there's a, a lot of stuff in here. And folks, this is my first time seeing it, and I'm still drooling over it. So go check it out in the App Exchange, and uh, let's, let's move on to the next person. So Jeff, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Joshua. Hey, next up we've got Cornerstone. And i got with me Casey Wynn from Cornerstone On Demand, the industry leader in learning management. Cornerstone for Salesforce is the first and only learning management system built native on the force.com platform and it's used to train internal employees, partners, or customers, all linked to their existing user records in Salesforce. You know how important that is to tie all that stuff back in there. Cornerstone for Salesforce is actually even used by Salesforce internally, as well as powering the help and training portal. So let's take a look at what Cornerstone for Salesforce can do. Casey, take it away. Thank you very much. So my name is Casey Wynn with Cornerstone for Salesforce. 
Uh, like you said, we are the first and only native learning management system on the force.com platform. Uh, some people ask who our target audience is. It's literally everyone. So every company in the world has to train someone, uh, whether it's onboarding employees or giving your salespeople the right information to win deals, uh, maybe certifying your partners, providing product information to your customers. We do all of that, and we do it from within Salesforce. So we attach it not only to the user record, but also to the contact record and account record. So the first thing I'll show you is an example of how one of our customers uses us to provide education to their customers. Uh, how many of you have been to the health and training portal? I'm assuming some people just raised their hands. Uh, so when you go to the health and training portal, this is Cornerstone. Communities are a huge strategy for us. Uh, this is just one example. This is how Salesforce uses us to power their customer education community. So going back to the internal view, you can see this is a typical salesperson. They have the access to opportunities, accounts, etc. They also now have access to take training. So on the My Training tab, this is the typical LMS experience. The user can see what they've been assigned. They can see what they've completed. They can search the catalog to self-enroll in training. Uh, um, later this summer, we'll also be offering badging. So for those who don't know, work.com badging is about to be offered free. So we're going to piggyback off of that and allow your users to earn work.com badges by taking training. So really gamifying it and socializing the training within Salesforce. Then we decided to take it a step further. We thought about where people are actually spending their time in Salesforce. So your salespeople are managing opportunities. Your marketing people are creating leads. Your customers are opening cases. So right there from any of those objects, we can now drive training. In this example, I'm going to be a salesperson. I'm competing against Siebel for the first time on a deal size of at least $100,000. Right here on the opportunity, I'm immediately prompted that there's some education available that's going to help me win this deal. So it's real time, it's contextual, never had to search for it, never had to leave what I'm doing. It's right there in front of me. And since we're an LMS, we're tracking who's actually launching the video. Salesforce is a CRM, so they're tracking who's closing opportunities and who's not. So using Salesforce reports and dashboards, you can now correlate the two you can determine if the salespeople who take training are actually winning more opportunities than salespeople who aren't. Are the customers who are taking training opening less cases than the ones who aren't? So for the first time, you can actually correlate learning metrics to sales metrics and prove if your training is actually effective. That is like right at, you know, I was about to give you the buzzer, but you did a great job, Casey. Hey, you know, this is pretty impressive not only that it runs the Salesforce training platform out there and that it's tracking all of the courses that we've been taking over the years but you know as I as I see you guys out there in the market and I know a lot of places that would love to use this kind of training the question is probably going to come up for most people do I have to have a Salesforce license for all of my employees because that could certainly be a, a huge number yeah, so definitely not. We, we have an embedded Salesforce license in our CFS license. So with our license, your users can get access to um, the learning and chatter. So you can really roll this out wall to wall. And we have a couple of companies using us just that way to really get more people involved in Salesforce and involved in chatter. Excellent. That is, that is extremely cool. And like, uh, like was said, we've we've all been part of using Cornerstone before, whether you realized it or not. So we appreciate you guys showing us today. And at this point, you know what it's ready, it's getting to be time for? We've got to give a little bit of appreciation for all of our, uh, all of our demo panelists today. The crowd is going wild, and I've actually been capturing all that from all of the others that are on the call right now. I just had to mute them because they're getting a little noisy. Oh, but man. I know, they are excited. But let's go ahead and get ready to have our poll go out there. Here's the deal, guys. There's a few rules behind this. We ask that you pick from the five that were there your favorite. And based on the honesty system, you know, if you happen to be, you know, if 
if all of the employees for a particular company logged in and said, hey, I want to watch this thing. We ask you to, to vote for somebody other than your own company, but here's the deal. We want to hear what you guys think is cool. We saw some amazing things today. We saw some amazing use of Salesforce technology beyond where I think most people have seen it used before, and it's, we've seen mm -hmm. some amazing things. So, Hannah, why don't you prepare us for that? Uh, um, Jeff, yeah. before we yeah, get there, I, we got I, one yeah. more person. You still oh, got in contact with you. We have one more. <laughs> oh, my. I am so sorry, guys. How could um, you forget, Jeff? It's, I don't that's know. <laughs> Let's go ahead and saving introduce. Saving the best for last. But, yeah, yes. so we have in contact. Um, but, yeah, thank you for reminding everybody to stay on, um, and I will launch the poll um, as soon as Adam and Tom um, get through their demo. Cool. Thanks, Hannah. So last but not least, we've got in contact, and I've got to give these guys some props. I was actually in London and got to see their, uh, their app uh, live demoed at the Austin People Party. So if you haven't attended the Austin People Party, uh, you've got to get an invite. But it's people like these who show up and they demo their product, and you get to talk to them afterwards. And of course, they buy you drinks. So anyway, we're up, um, and we're going to sort of uh, transition to in contact. With us from in contact, we've got Adam and Tom. Adam's going to be the demoer, he's going to be the Mr. Uh, Dan Darcy, and then we've got Tom as well. So for those of you that aren't familiar with InContact, InContact is a customer experience solution leader and the largest provider of cloud-based solutions for the contact center. Um, their app, within their app, they're going to demonstrate that um, InContact agent for Salesforce integrates seamlessly and enables organizations around the globe to create a more personalized, more empowering, and more engaging customer experience. Tom, are you out there? I am, and thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm no flattered worries. that you remembered us. Um, <laughs> um, Adam is going to be sharing his screen, so let's make sure that we pop that over to him. Um, Let me see. I don't see Adam dialed in to give him presenter. Well, that would make it uh, difficult. <laughs> Adam, are you there? Adam? Oh, Adam, where are you? Yeah, I couldn't find Adam, so I was like, hmm, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just go to the next one. Um, let me see. Sorry, we're just having... He, he says he's on and muted. Huh. Would you enter your panelist pin, pound, and then that pin number, two or three digits, and then a pound? And if you've dialed in as your panelist ID, that will unmute you. Oy. All right. Well, why will we get into that? So, so Jeff, I mean, thus far, I think we've had some some great presenters. Um, I'm I'm still freaking amazed by um, by Click Software. They've showed some pretty awesome stuff. What well, do you think about the people on your side? I think, I think you know, there is some amazing stuff out there, and that's why, you know, you saw me get so excited I forgot our last presentation, which is, you know, unfortunate for, for me. But, uh, yeah, I think it's amazing to see what the platform can do. And when you see Visual Force pages out there, they'll allow you to drag and drop things here and there. And, I mean, seeing it on a mobile app and, you know, being able to walk out in your warehouse and scan things. And, I mean, there's just some amazing, amazing stuff out there. So. Hey. hey guys, I think I'm back live. Can you hear me and see me? Yay, it's hey. Adam. Yay. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so a little technical snafu. So are we ready to go then? Yeah, no yeah. problem. Yeah. Welcome to the party, Adam, and over to you guys. Excellent. So um, thanks for the intro and thanks for the patience with the technical difficulties there. My name is Tom Milligan. I'm the Vice President of Emerging Channels at InContact. And as uh, was previously mentioned, InContact is the largest cloud-based contact center provider in the world. Um, today I'm going to be playing the part of an angry customer. I placed an order two weeks ago for, uh, for parts from the parts store, and they have uh, one chance to make this right. Um, so let's yeah, go ahead and dial uh, it in. Oh, this is taking way too long. That's making me angrier. They have one chance to make it right. Calling the technology parts store. For our parts department, please press 1. 
for our SIP. Hi, Tom. I see you're calling from the Performance Parts Store. I found your most recent order, and I'll connect you with a representative. Hey guys, I'm Adam and I'm working in a contact center powered by the Salesforce console service cloud and in contact. I can see a call, a call in queue, so let's go available and answer it. As soon as I go available, this call is going to be routed to me and you're going to see a screen pop in Salesforce. This is going to give me Tom's record and it's also going to give me all the information that I need to take care of Tom. And by scrolling down to the bottom here, I can look into his cases and look into his order that he placed two weeks ago and why he is so angry at us. Uh-oh. So, I'd like to add three parts to my order. We can go ahead and take care of Tom. And Tom, is there anything else I can do for you today to take care of you? No, I am a happy customer. Why don't you show us what happens after the call? Okay, excellent. After we get done taking care of Tom, all I do is disconnect the call and disposition it. I go available and immediately a task is created in Salesforce that has all of my contact center and Salesforce case information, including the call recording embedded in Salesforce. There's only one place to go for all this information. All this magic takes place thanks to our call flow design tool. It's all GUI visual based. It looks scary. I promise it's not. It's very simple. You drag, you drop, you connect, and I just created a play function in the script. This script is actually what just made this happen. That's awesome. It's easy to see why uh, Piper Jaffrey says that in contact is doing for the contact center what Salesforce did for CRM. Back to you guys. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that demo, guys. Uh, it was really cool to be able to see all the touch points from the, the angry customer, from the, uh, the, the uh, phone system, actually knowing who my name is and answering by phone, um, and seeing the call flow design. Um, all that stuff tied together in a comprehensive view in, in one system is really what allows um, you to get more efficient service. So um, I'm glad that you had a delighted customer today, and uh, we'll move on to the question. So the question that I have for you guys is um, the overall contact center market, um, what's, sort of the, what's sort of the uh, migration plan for people that are looking to move from on-premise phone systems or on-premise telephony environments to cloud um, with Salesforce.com and your tool? Well, that's a great question, you know, and just like CRM, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, everybody was buying premise-based or land-based uh, technology, but today almost all of the new uh, refresh, refresh contact centers are buying cloud, and most of the large companies, Verizon and AT&T and Siemens, um, Ring Central and leaders in those spaces are now reselling in contact as part of their solution and the cloud is taking a big chunk of the $9 billion contact center technology market. Awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Definitely learned a lot about, uh, about, about CTI and um, how your product plugs into Salesforce to enable call centers. So, Jeff, remember about, I would say five minutes ago, can we rewind back in time and go over the rules for the polling again? We can. Well, awesome. over to you. Right now, what you guys are going to see is you're going to see the, the rules for everybody who is presenting here. Let's talk about voting. So now you guys have seen five solutions out there. You've seen some pretty amazing stuff. And I'm, I'm imagining you haven't seen all those before. Now your job as people who are attending this webinar is to vote for the one that you think is the coolest. And based on the demo, they've only had the same amount of time for everybody. Which do you think is the coolest demo out there? And Hannah is going to be presenting us with a poll. And while we do that, we're going to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of rah rah. We got a little, and of course we know that we had some, and that was actually all recorded while you guys were on mute. There, we we still have ways of recording you. Yes. So now, as the poll goes out, we want you guys to vote for, and we will announce a winner in a minute. But we need a little bit of mood music to prepare yeah. for it. It's a little dramatic. We're going to have the poll go up. You vote. You tell us which one you think was the best. Oh, it's so close. Hey, Jeff, that's my favorite jam. Do it one more time. Yeah. Exactly. We are preparing the results. The ballots are being counted. 
I can hear them. Hopefully, we don't have to have a recount. That would be that would be horrible. <laughs> Hannah, how Go are we first. doing on the poll? We're about seventy-five percent there. Nice. Get your votes in. Get your votes in. This is the time. All right. Can we get that sound clip one more time? I love it. You bet. I'm almost getting ready to surf or something. All right, how are we doing, Hannah? 81%. All right. Come on, you those slow folks. Yeah, those are you who are sitting on that mouse. Definitely click the button. There's only five options. All right, time's up. Are we ready? No, we we're only at 83%. Oh, come on, guys. Are we going to get to 100? I mean, I, I'm i kind of questioning 100 out there. These people walked away from their computers and forgot to vote. Exactly. This is not allowed. People did fast demos. We went to battle. Prepared to do a demo in a short amount of time. Yeah. All that work and you can't vote? Come on, people. Ready? Come on, come on, come on. We are getting excited. I'm getting so excited that I'm going to show the slide, and then we're going to hear from Hannah. Yay. We see the Demo Jam is going to be presented to... Hannah, we're going okay. to tell us. I think, that, I, think we're, I think we're about there now. All right. Okay. This is the killing me. This is killing me. Come oh, on. Okay. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven six, six. Oh, one. it's going up now. It's five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, that last person out there. It's a good thing this meeting is virtual. And, oh, by the way, one important thing, guys. We know who you logged in with because we required your email address when you signed up. So those people who registered for their own company and voted for the company are not allowed to vote for their company. I want to make it fair for everybody. Do you like that? Delta? Well, we love having not like allowed. Our... <laughs> we really appreciate everybody showing up turning out yeah. and for the whole duration of this. I was looking at the attendee count, and it has stayed steady, guys. So we really appreciate you guys spending time on a Thursday morning, <laughs> afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Hannah, do you have it yet? You've been making me wait. Sorry, okay. I, well, I saw a couple of votes change right when Ooh. we mentioned some, uh, uh, some rules. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to close it. I'm literally holding my breath. <clears throat> and the winner is... Can you guys see the, the winner? Or am I the only one that can No, we it? want you to announce it, Hannah. This is your big it's... shot. <laughs> the winner of the Demo Jam is Team Aptis with Diana Lustinger. All right. Yay, Diana. Hey, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Aptis, Aptis is one of mine. Just saying. Yeah. Hey, hey now. I, as I recall, I think the last demo jam, my guys won. So, you know, we're just going to have to watch and see what happens next time. It's, it's kind of like, you know, those, those competition shows on Food Network to see which chef can train, can train people, uh, you know. We'll have, to, we'll have to do a rematch because uh, next No rematch, no rematch. Challenge accepted. No, we will will need to do a rematch. Next, I will see you on the next demo jam, no doubt about that. Yeah, because these next. votes came in so close. So we will definitely, definitely need to do this again. But the big thing is, guys, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your day and spending time with us, seeing these five partners out there. We thank each of the five partners for putting in the work. It is hard to make your product shine in three minutes or less. You guys are troopers for doing that. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Hannah and team from App Exchange, for hosting us. And Joshua, and this is, words? yeah, there's a couple more things, guys. So this uh, this webinar is actually being recorded, so you, the people that missed all the awesome stuff can actually see it um, in real time later at their own 
and convenience. And it will be provided by a blog post that will be posted um, in a couple weeks' time. So thanks so much for joining, and um, definitely look forward to seeing you guys on the next Demo Jam. Anything else, Anna? No, this is great. And thank you guys for uh, moderating and making this such a great time. We had fun doing it. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon or evening, wherever you are on the globe. Talk to you soon. Yeah, Dreamforce. Thank you to all our participants as well. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.